News First News Line with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a splendid morning to you. This is News Line live as always from the News First studios in Dorset Street in Colombo. And of course, we broadcast on TV One, which, needless to say, is a proud member of the Capital Marriage Group. And now then, this morning, there's one word in our minds, isn't there? Parliament has been prorogued. Not a lot of people probably heard that because I don't think it's been used a lot uh, since 2009. And uh, we also have a little explanation uh, about why Parliament has been prorogued by that gentleman who keeps us all very busy. His name's Lachman Kirianda, but he's not here. We have somebody who's uh, very qualified to talk about all this in the form of Krishma Wandersuri. Very good morning to you, Krishma. Top of the morning to you, Farah. It's good to be here. And yes, uh, <coughs> nice to see you here. And you brought your uh, inevitable tab. Um, Have become my lifelong companion. Yes. Now, now is it keeping tabs on you? Well, uh, I don't know whether someone's using this to keep tabs on me, but uh, I think my wife will very soon complain that this is much more with me than than her or oh, the really? children and the children <laughs> and the kids as well. I oh, see. Yeah. Now then, Krishna. Um, I, I, I only read this just as I was coming into the studio okay. and in the Daily Mirror, it's in the other papers as well, Parliament prorogued in keeping with tradition. Parliament was prorogued according to tradition with the prof proper procedures being followed. So said Leader of the House, Minister Lakshman Kiriala. But he went on to say, Mr. Kiriala was to address journalists in Kandy. Prorogation is a common procedure which is followed to allow MPs and parliamentary staff to have a break. Sorry, I don't mean to be flippant about this, but don't they have pre-planned sessions in which parliament is stopped and <coughs> to take a break and so on? Proroguing yes. isn't to do with that, surely. Yeah, for us, we can, we can definitely uh, discuss the reason for prorogation of parliament and what the constitutional provisions are and why it may have been brought about yes. um, and 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 frankly in, in a in a one shot answer i think that's that's absolute tosh because if that it's is so yeah if flip. that is so they when they when they postpone the sessions of parliament they could have taken into account how much of time that was needed Correct. for them to come back to parliament Absolutely. you don't need his excellency the president to prorogue parliament yes. but can we uh, without i'm mean, without i'm sure your your viewers uh, as indeed your station uh, and those of us watching without wasting our valuable mm, airtime. Absolutely. Part, true. part, well of, part, of, part of the sovereign power of the people. Ultimately, although your station pays for the infrastructure, the airwaves belong to the people. Absolutely. Uh, so, can we utilize uh, this time indeed. constructively indeed. in why the need is for this power struggles in politics? Ah, perhaps, yes. Proroguing well, that, parliament. That's, that's or, what I'd be I mean, uh, what, what, where are we going wrong? The, these are, these are, we are all thinking of proroguing parliament. Why yeah. someone. Uh, has a no confidence motion, why the president has done this. So we are also either willingly or unwillingly being part of uh, this political drama the, which is to do with power struggles between them. It, it doesn't benefit it? any of you. Yes. Any one of you or me personally know whether they prorogue it, whether they sit, whether they don't sit. I mean, how does it benefit you? Will it will it reduce your tax burden? Will it allow your kids to have a better education? Will it allow you to have a health system? So, can we discuss uh, why the reasons are as to why we follow this stupid drama called politics and not really discuss matters that matter to us? Indeed. But, but uh, you know, um, Dinesh Kunawad in the, is quoted in the island this morning, but he said this yesterday. Um, he's, but he's got it sort is he is he right? Prorogation of parliament um, reflects a deepening crisis. Yeah. I think that's what we need. What has brought this about? Yeah, I think that's what we need to address. That there is a, there is a political crisis. Yeah. And I'm telling, uh, I'm, I'm, this, I'm actually addressing now your, your viewers or uh, who we, you and I associate as the general English speaking uh, population that may be watching this program yeah. uh, in this country. Please, I think it's high time that we got out of our armchair criticisms that we, you know, 90% uh, of us for us, including yeah. my friends, I'm sure some of you who have been school with you also, yeah. like to sit back in the evening, watch news and then see, well, who has fought our battles for us? 
uh, and then who has done something that you will mean benefit they're seated us in the do nothing seat in the do nothing seat and then think but i'm telling you now yeah. even if you were that in the past yeah. remember very soon this is going to hit you unless you get out of your chair and do something about it you know why you know why the we see road rage when we go on the road and the three wheel driver or the man who's knocked by even when it's not our fault who actually get together gang up and start beating you up yeah. do you know why people when you when 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 you get off from a, a semi luxury or a decent vehicle and and get out of a or vehicle and go somewhere where people look uh, yeah, with with a evil eye at you yeah. because this disparity is going and very soon it's going to come and visit you yeah. and it's going to affect you if you don't take an interest in matters that matter to you as a nation not these political power struggles of some 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 people who you we have elected i yeah. think miselected yeah. and placed in public office uh, who are not doing their job but you need to get out of your seats and and start becoming uh, active citizens mm. if we are to live the republic that we have built yes but at the same time yeah. uh, krishmal i can't help but notice that there are <clears throat> an increasing number of sort of uh, civic society sort of organizations uh, who are being formed in various groups yeah. uh, to activate to agitate against the, um, and to express their growing frustration yeah. uh, at the inaction yeah. and the departure from process and procedure. Mm. And do you know, um, I was I was speaking to a, a foreigner a couple of days ago. Mm. He said, "Look, we you need to have your policies need to be stable." Yeah. He said, "You have." Your your taxation system. One day they say you've got to pay. May I just cut short and 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 yes. and, and complete what I was trying to say yes. earlier for us? That's exactly what your foreign friend is saying. Yeah. Uh, if I may take a few minutes, we I think the problem on policy is 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 broad. We are in an institutional vacuum for us. We 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 are we are facing a vacuum where these politics or politicians, the three institutions of government. the legislature judicial law executive branches even other institutions the capital market media all of these institutions are facing a vacuum with the lack of integrity ethics and what is right what ought to be done and what is not being done so when there is this vacuum obviously people the wrong people tend to tend to fit into these vacuums and create a misnomer or a misculture you we, we must realize that our institutions have failed we need to find out why those institutions have failed and address that and one one direct reason that i i see is uh, as you said we have also formed a, 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 a very a very active uh, group initiative called rata surakumu or yeah. protect our that's nation. exactly what i mean yeah so now we we, we on the 25th of april we'll be having our first membership meeting i invite all of you to come you can look us up on facebook but can i you know after particularly after 1978 yeah we had this very, we had this lock stock and barrel run towards a heavy materialism mm-hmm. or or a very or a very uh, very uh, serious consumer based consumerism which 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 i think has has now uh, sort of capitalized not just here all over the world into an ever increasing need to keep up with the expenditure you know why very very smartly the capital market has also looked at Uh, gradually how to increase what we want mm. with the uh, expense with the income that we get for example a credit card what the credit card companies will also will always come after you look at your income and say well we will increase your credit limit mm. similarly banks will follow your income and say well we'll give you a loan mm. why because we are trying to match so many wants that we can't actually afford and this system is now driving us towards that heavy consumerism yes. because of that There, there is a new rich for us. That because of that, this even these politicians who come to power and try to gain a quick buck or a tender or something, I think is driven by that. Because uh, instead of the those old values that we had of our parents and our teachers telling us what was right, what was wrong, no, however much you offered, you ought not do this. Mm. That has been overtaken or almost killed, I think, mm. with a heavy consumerism saying no at whatever cost. I need to have this car. Or this watch, or this shirt, to be better than the other person uh, who's wearing it or having it. Yes, but but Krishna, all this uh, would you say uh, there is some uh, there's some um, sense to it? Yeah. But it's also dri- d- uh, 
you know, the people are short of money, so they continue to borrow. Why uh, are they short of money? Yes, because the prices keep going up. Yes, so why are the price? That, that's why, Farah, this is not... This <laughs> it's is like not, a chicken and no, egg. It's, no, yeah, but, but we have to realize as a people... Now, for example, there's a longer discussion for another show. Yeah. Uh, as to what the economic policies are. Have we gone away from at least trying to, at least trying, if not self-sufficient, at least trying to get a percentage, at least a larger percentage of our national production to match our national need, yeah. right? Or have we have we advised even our farmers to sell off their paddy lands and, and uh, uh, what put windmills on it or something and sell it to the market? Yeah. You follow? So, so these are I, I, this is not just one story that we can discuss no, uh, on, on economic policy. But what I'm saying is that heavy consumerism, yeah. the, the market-based capitalism. So uh, basically, the, I'll finish here. Yeah. What I feel for us is uh, uh, the, the the old political systems that 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 you and I have studied, that we have studied in the University of in the science of politics, yes. have also failed, in my opinion. Even communism, socialism. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, as you see now, uh, we, we thought that that was a rise of proletariat toll, it will lead to the people's power reigning. But now Putin has been uh, elected for another fourth or uh, fifth term and that man in China has uh, got lifelong uh, presidency. Mm -hmm. The people have the people's republic apparently decide he can live lifelong as a president. Yeah. You see, then if you look at uh, federalism or neo-federalism or, you know, which is a break off with this democracy or, or this capital-based economy. Even that has failed. That there is a there is a new rich. There is a chap now the class system that you and I are used to looking at for us. Yeah. I think has been overtaken by a rich or a non-rich. So all of us belong to one of these classes, and the, then the difference between these classes are fast technically. That's why I, I gave the warning to our people: if don't think that just belong just because you belong to a new rich or a rich, that the struggle is not going to come to your doorstep because right now. There are people agitating when they have to uh, spend one and a half, two hours, two and a half hours getting to a place of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after that also what they earn is not even enough to, to provide for their children. Yes. Where have we gone wrong? We need to, perhaps I think if all the old political system have faced, we must look at a new, new uh, uh, fourth uh, system of governance, which I, which I like to call a new republicanism. We must build a republic. Because the republic, Janaraj Singh Singhala, is not something now. We are a socialist republic of Sri Lanka. But I don't know whether people know what a republic is. Republic is not something where we build, we the people build, where we hold the power, elect someone once in five years and sit back and watch on the news in the night. A republic is a living, breathing thing. We need to work on it. As citizens, we need to act, take active part in it and polish it, cut it and, and shine it and make the republic that we want. And, and I don't think our people have realized that. Um, just ahead of this break, we've got one uh, comment which I thought I'll take on. Uh, prices are going up mainly because 10,000 rupees a month is given to an unproductive sector which employs 1.5 million people. So we now do little at a higher cost. The, the, is this a fair comment and attack on the well, public it's, it's sector? A, it's, a, it's a fair comment on, a, on, on directly on what they're seeing now. But what I'm, I'm, what I'm urging your viewer to do is to look beyond that 10,000 rupees that someone promised and gave and on an unproductive sector is just part of the problem. It's a very superficial, top of the iceberg part of the problem. We need to look at the public service. Mm. Is the public service performing what it ought to be? Mm. Are they, are public servants, have they become government servants now and serving a government of a day that comes and goes and running behind their political masters, answering their cell phones, rather than sitting at their desk and doing what a public servant ought to be doing, which is serving the republic. That's, the a, that, that's, an, in, uh, that's an interesting point, which I know you've raised uh, previously as well. Yeah. After the break, we'll um, um, rejoin uh, Krishma Vanasurya and he's going to explain to us the difference between public sector and government. Don't go away, this is Newsline. Dolly. And welcome back to Newsline. We're joined here by Mr. Krishma Vanasurya and uh, I'll come back to that in a second. Um, a viewer is asking, does prorogation of parliament mean that all proposed acts of parliament now before the house are cancelled? No, it's very clear. The constitution is very clear that you at the point it. of prorogation, all those matters that were placed in order papers or the matters, parliamentary matters that came to a standstill will recommence from, uh, from the next uh, summoning of the next session. Right. Um, 
Um, right. Uh, well, there are lot, lots of questions. They're, I'm just quickly reading through them. They're, they're much of the same, really. Yeah. Now then, Krishman, <laughs> we went on to public servants. Mm. Aren't they here to, uh, what are they here to serve? The government or the public? No, they, every public servant for us, just like we lawyers do, and most public servants do, uh, all of them, not the most, <laughs> except for your... Except one. <laughs> except, except, for one. Your, except for your good friend. Now, I didn't mention <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't bring it <laughs> no, up. You gave up. Because each time I come here, I have to mention it. <laughs> so, uh, they take an oath of office on the Constitution. Shall we, in case the people wondering what yeah. this thing was, who was this? Uh, well, I, our good friend, Mr. James Bond. <laughs> uh, also, <laughs> yeah. So, you take an Secretary. oath of office on yeah. the Constitution yeah. and you swear allegiance to the Republic yeah. and to serve the Republic and, and, and to, uh, to that end, you, you take an oath of office. Yeah. Mm? Yeah. And that's in the, in the, one of the schedules of the Constitution. Right. Yes, the 7th and 8th schedule. So, now, once you take that oath, my argument is that you are alleged to serve the Republic. What is the Republic? The Republic is made up of the people, the people's sovereign power, Article 3. In, in terms of Article 3, it's a people that hold sovereign power of this Republic and that we give to institutions to exercise on our behalf. Mm. Now, if you serve the Republic and therefore the people, you cannot be subservient to a government that comes and goes. I always say the state, the Republic is permanent. Governments are temporary. They come and they go. They can fall, they can stand. But when you are a public servant and then you somewhere down the line we have lost this. That a public servant has forgotten that he is a public servant. Remember the good old days where I don't know both your parents, my, my, both my parents are government servants. Uh, <laughs> public servant. I also use the term wrong term. <laughs> a public servant. And they, are, though they talk to me all days where their bosses never got up from the chair. The, the executive part, the minister or deputy used to come and ask, can we do this according to FR and AR, your administrative regulations, your finance regulations, can we do this? But now what has that become? Our fellows are running behind these uh, the, the jokers who probably don't have half of the qualifications they have with a cell phone saying, sir, 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 call lega. you know, may call lega. and then running with the butt packet for them. Mm. And so, so we have brought the level of public service to a government service and therefore they also believe if I support a certain government or a politician in power, I'll survive. Because if he goes, I go. But that ought not to be the case. And if, as your viewer earlier said, if you are spending so much of money on the public service, let us first start revamping the public service. Because I think for us, you know, we are blaming politicians. So, as I said, 90% of us sit in the armchair blame politicians. But we are not looking at why those politicians are there. They are the leaders that you have elected I, I to think, represent you. I think we were, uh, we were, uh, from the fact that this is stored, it, it's uh, uh, a regular viewer. The fish rots from the head. The people are taught by power-abusing politicians that there are rich rewards for behaving badly. Your program should look into petty politicians terrorizing public servants into doing the wrong thing by threats of transfers to horrible locations. Example, this has happened to the cops and to teachers and others. So which is why, as I said, we have... I, not just me, several others, but of course, as you earlier said, civil society movements can be put up even by governments in office yes. just to protect uh, and to give a uh, uh, impression to the public that what they're doing is right. Fake but, news. Yeah, f f we make fake news. But now we have, as you said, uh, as I said earlier, on the 25th of April, come and join a civil movement. If you look on our Facebook page, Dr. Surakimu, uh, you will see the number of people involved, uh, society leaders, civil society leaders involved. But uh, what, that, this no, is no, what but I'm no, saying. I'm coming to your question. Yeah. So that we can raise a voice against any such nonsense where if a public servant were to stand up and take a stand on a certain matter, yeah. and if he were, if, he, if someone went behind him as a political master, we'll take that issue on. Yeah. And we'll protect that public servant. Because if the public service is not doing it, and if the state is not interested, I don't think this, this government is ever interested in, in educating the public uh, in these matters. Mm. Because no, the, the, this, remember these, the, the very politician who you referred to, I'm not referring, the, the, that cutthroat politician that you referred to, survives and thrives on this whole situation. They do not want an educated republic. They don't want people to shout about their health policy or their education policy or their transport policy. They, 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 will, they will love it. If you remain subservient to them from birth to death, from the time your child is born 
to give the child a name, then to put the child to school, then to find the child a job, then at the marriage to come and sign for the child, at the death also to come near your sohona and give a sohon speech or, or, or a funeral speech. If you can get a politician, you would love, they would love that because that gives them the stardom. And you, unfortunately, some of the media also are giving them that stardom, publicizing when they hit each other and slap each other with a slipper, you're showing that. Mm. But you're not giving enough time. We're trying to highlight the, the yeah, yeah, we, we, how we, bad we, they we are. We must give enough time for the uh, issues like this. Mr. Varnasu is, is very much focusing on country issues. However, the executive presidential system is still there, uh, the, and that the Republican concept will not work. Does he agree? I don't agree. If, they, if, if I agree that the Republican con the concept won't work, then I am going to suck up and go and perhaps live in a socialist state or even a, uh, a dictatorial state uh, like the old Hitler's, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> but, uh, the Nazi Republic that he tried to create. Uh, I don't believe in that. I shall keep on fighting for a republic until the day I die and I, in I invite you who, who, who are also sons and daughters of this soil who love this country, perhaps like us who have gone abroad, but come back having uh, other opportunities available for us so that we can build a republic. I invite you to come along and join us and fight for it. And uh, this one seems to be a focus question. Civil stroke public servants can independently work by changing Article 52 of the Constitution. And uh, Mr. Varasuri is... I uh, don't unfortunately know all the articles by heart. Right. But <laughs> Article 52 of the Constitution, really? I wonder what they're trying to where, amend. Where, 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 where did yeah. you study? Uh, I studied uh, for In us, Trinity? Uh, Trinity? Which, is, <laughs> which is popularly known as a school by the sea. Oh, them. Yeah. Yes, uh, them. yes you're talking secretaries to ministries. Well, yeah. I, I don't, don't, don't forget that we made certain changes to this uh, with, with the creation of a constitutional council public service commission and the fact that the head of state uh, appoints uh, the secretaries to all the ministries uh, and, and they are directly answerable uh, therefore to the executive, mm -hmm. the, the, the one who give, we give our executive power to, yeah. which comes back to earlier question on this executive power and parliamentary power and all that. Yeah. We have, I think, given enough safeguards to these public servants to do their job and there are indeed several. If you look at Mr. Ambangwala who uh, was uh, subject to acid attack, the, yeah. the Otto General who's presently functioning, who's doing a yeoman service. And who's, who's been constantly who's, berated yes, by so, the so There are public servants, even to date, who are, who are standing up because they have seen beyond being a subservient to a government of the day and they stand up for what they have edu been educated by the Republic for. The, the taxpaying citizens have educated us. Uh, sent to our local universities, our product of a local university. And that is why we are trying to serve. But no, so there are public servants who are like that, who stand on principle. Yes, and now, no, no, uh, Krishma, what can a ministry secretary do when the minister willy-nilly is, in, in, for all to see, is discussing refuse. procurement with contractors, potential contractors, consultants, God knows whistle what. Whistleblowing. Don't forget that there is a concept called whistleblowing that's accepted worldwide now, universally. Indeed. And they can always dial 0772 300 305. Yeah, what's the number right uh, here. Uh, uh, and we will follow it one up. Of the, one of the best voices of whistleblowers mm -hmm. is Mr. Farah Shaukot Ali. We, 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 will, we will do it. 0772 300 305. Send us your SMS. Send us your information, we will look into it on your behalf. And of course, we do check for veracity. So don't don't try it on, okay? On that uh, same note, may I just give the number of, if anyone is interested? Please do, please do. 070 224 70 If you are interested in joining us on the 25th of April at 6 o'clock in the evening and to start a movement that will hopefully go towards changing this country, it's a collection of, as I said, uh, civil leaders, uh, state leaders in sports, everyone, uh, and and also asso associations. Uh, right. Our people's intellectual assembly is part of it. The Nuara Purvaisi Paramuna Candy uh, yeah. is part of it. So we are we are trying to build a massive force that will make a voice in changing this country. And if you're interested in joining us, six o'clock in the evening on the twenty fifth of April, zero seven zero double two four six eight nine five is a number to call. Da, it's a good job that our viewers are all uh, very switched on and they they remember these things. But then you can pause things these days, can't you? Now then, uh, Krishma. Why? Why is it that the people find the need to join into a collective and uh, start complaining or agitating 
and wanting change. Because After all, they elected the government yes, that so promised change. So that's why we keep on saying, you and I had said this before, no, Faraz, uh, democracy gets the leaders they deserve. When we instill, our, I don't even want to call them leaders because uh, we must call them our representatives yes. or elected uh, servants. They are elected by us. We pay them a salary. We pay for their travel, we pay for all their foreign tamashas, for their wife to go shopping with a driver and for one man to wave to the left when they want to turn, another man to wave to the right when they want to turn, right? And for, for them to whisk us off the street in their intercoolers, we pay for it. You are tax money and mine, the increase of tax pays for it. I don't think any reasonable, rational man or woman will, uh, uh, will uh, uh, sort of complain about uh, payment of taxes if like uh, the, at least a relatively developed world, our transport is good. Our healthcare system is good. If our education is, we don't mind paying taxes. But no one wants to pay taxes for some donkey to buy a 300 million rupee vehicle. That's right. You follow? So, so that is why, because we we need to now educate the masses. And you, I say, this problem is going to come home to you. Don't think it's something that a few people should be fighting for you to watch in the news in the evening. We are relaxing with a, with a, with a chill drink. This is not such a problem. It's where citizens need to actively engage in building a republic. And if not, these leaders will, or the so-called leaders that you instill in public office, uh, or the majority instill in public office, will harm you. The majority of them. There are some good people in there. I think they will also, if we make a massive enough movement and a voice, they will have no choice, at least for political survival, yeah. to, to engage with us. Indeed. So, the people need to arise and build the republic for which this, this, this uh, our republic has built. In the last two minutes... Uh, can we just go back to uh, the house on the lake there, the parliament? Can you tell me, now that these um, SLFP members have said we can't be party to this thing, um, and they're going to go and sit in the opposition, uh, on the opposition bench, is that a real case to change the leader of the opposition? Of course. Uh, because for us, uh, this is not me, uh, the so-called majority signal is Varna Zuri saying, but as Mr. Mano Ganeshan said on your news last night, he also said, if the opposition leader is not doing the job of opposition leader and challenging issues that face the country mm. and only discussing some issues that face one community, mm. then he should not be opposition. And, and what he said was, if he's not at least doing that. At if he's not at least doing that, they must change it. The operative bird <laughs> being at least. At least. But my argument goes beyond that. An opposition leader must be made of a proper opposition in parliament. No? That's what a Westminster system contemplates no, for us. Now we have a so-called government of which a concomitant, par concomitant party is part of a party that contested an election. Mm -hmm. Which in terms of the constitution, I have said this before on your station, mm -hmm. is unlawful. Because a government, national government can only be made of the party that garners the highest majority. Even that some people have questioned on your station whether that was a party that contested. Yeah. That's a different story. Yeah. The party that garners the highest majority with another party or parties or independent groups. But here we have only part of a party that formed that so-called national government. That's why I kept on saying it's unconstitutional. Uh, now it's part. Part. Now it's another, now even from that part, Another part has severed away and said that they are going to sit in opposition. So you don't have a party that contested the election forming the so-called national government. And therefore it's unlawful. Therefore it falls upon His Excellency the President upon whom we have vested our executive power with a di in a direct election. Yes. Not now. His Executive the President elects uh, from people in the legislature where we have in another election sent some people to the legislature. From there he say, takes some MPs to assist him in executing his executive power. Mm. But we have directly given executive power to his Excellency the President. And we as those people will expect his Excellency the President to make sure that the government he instills is lawful in terms of the constitution. Good. Um do you know half an hour is up? <laughs> yeah, when you're talking interesting uh, things how, you do for us, how, how time us. flies. How time. Uh, Krishna Varsi, uh, our grateful thanks. Another message quickly coming through. Um, ask Krishna whether the information you have on Kiriala can be placed before magistrate for investigation. Very quickly. I can't give a quick you answer. I don't know the information. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, on another program. But thank you for the question and thank you for your presence here. Krishma Varun Surya. Always good to be here. And thank you very much indeed. And that's the tab that fell. <laughs> um, that's it from Newsline today. Uh, on Thursday, the 19th of April, 2018. Take care and God bless. News
ब्रेकफास्ट न्यूज लाइव विथ फराज शाहकुटाली